Hi, I'm Jeff Erdman. I'm with Denison Yachting, and we're just on our way back in from our first test sail aboard the 2021 Beneteau Oceanus 30.1. It was an awesome experience. I was really surprised at how nicely she sailed. The motion of the boat was excellent as well. We went through some fairly rough wakes and I noticed there was almost no water on the deck. What did you see, Matthew? One of the things that was shocking to me, especially in this light air, it's probably 10 knots sustained, but we could tack the boat with just the mainsail. It is quite remarkable. I remember just as we were coming into port and I said, I'm gonna try and tack it because we rolled up the Genoa and you said, no way it's gonna happen. And we just, Not we, didn't even, we didn't even make that wrong. much speed, but we actually tacked right on through. I think it's in part because of these twin rudders. It gives the boat that much more stability and steering and motion. The other thing that we just did a few minutes ago was I like to always test a boat in power and reverse. And she backed beautifully for a long ways. I would say we must have backed at least a half mile in reverse. And you can definitely tell she's in line with her bigger sisters, you know, the 40.1, the 46.1, the 51.1. In terms of the sail plane, she has the optional upwind downwind pack. And you get an overlapping Genoa, the lead car system, um, and it's just a much better performing boat. The other thing I noticed that was really interesting is the way the main sail is cut, we actually have a square top main, much like we would have in a catamaran. And I noticed with no backstays here, we could have a big roach in the mainsail. I think that is also, besides the twin rudders, is the reason we could tack through with just the mainsail alone. It's a very simple standing rigging setup. No backstays to worry about or be in your way. You have both the upper and lower shroud with swept back main attached directly with the chain plates outboard. I really like that, not having the opportunity for leaking on the chain plates and easy to inspect. Another thing I really enjoyed about our sail on the 30.1 today is the twin helms really on a boat this size accentuate the ability to get around the cockpit easily. But the other thing is, this is such a comfortable pace right here to sit and see your head sail while you're steering the boat relatively close to the wind. You can see the head sails very easy. You've got access to your sheet winch right here and the Genoa car adjustment point. Another really nice feature of the 30.1 is this helm pod right here with a very substantial stainless steel mount. Within it, we have flush mounted B&G seven inch display and a Triton along with a bearing compass. Another nice feature is the position of the clutch and throttle. It's very easy to adjust the throttle up or down with your toes. Now we're back at the dock here, safely tied up. We've got the shore power connected with the eel clip and everything's ready to go. So I'd like to just sort of talk a little bit about some of the creature comforts on the boat now that we've seen the operation. We have room easily for three on each side very comfortably with a beautiful drop leaf table, good handhold, and this is so stout you can really just throw your hip into it as you're moving through the cockpit. So you've got some really good safety features. One of the really shocking things about this boat is the size of this lazarette. It's so large that on a lot of boats it would be another cabin. On one of the sister ships, the service department installed a custom air conditioning system that runs off lithium batteries. That gives you up to 24 hours of continuous running time or three eight hour shifts giving you clean, cool comfort with no noise. If you'd like to learn more about that air conditioning system, there'll be a link down below to an article on it. I'd be remiss to not mention the drop down swim platform on this boat. It's interesting, when we were coming in, we decided to raise it so we wouldn't actually bump it as we were docking. And I was able to raise it without any effort from Matthew at all. From here, I'd like to hand it over to Matthew Morrison. He's gonna discuss the sail plan. Leaving the cockpit and approaching midship, you'll find an abundance of safety characteristics. Not only will you see that the shrouds are mounted outboard, you also have a grab rail on the cabin top. As we mentioned today in the beginning of our walkthrough, our stock 30.1 in particular is equipped with the upwind downwind pack. 
What that means is you have a classic square top main, fully battened, an overlap in Genoa in lieu of the standard self-tacking jib, and a lead car system as well for the overlapping Genoa. This makes the 30.1 more conducive for the light air sailing we often experience in the summer in Florida. Directly forward of the mast are two Lumar flush mounted hatches with integrated derates. One of these opens into the salon and the other in the master. You would be hard pressed to find an anchor locker this big on any other boat this size. Here you have your Lumar electric windlass with remote and road. This is the integrated bow pulpit that I mentioned earlier. Not only does it have a tack point for your code zero, but you can also see that it has a bow roller for your anchor. If you were to ask me what surprised me the most on the 30.1, it's this little gadget right here. This is a remote control for the boat's autopilot. Red, hit it once, that's plus one degree to port. Hit green once, one degree to starboard. What this means, if you're pulling into a mooring, you can control your boat anywhere on board. In line with her bigger sisters, you'll notice the 30.1 also boasts the integrated tow rail. Now, follow me down below where we're gonna check out the interior and I'm gonna hand it back over to Jeff. So not only is the Beneteau 30.1 a remarkable sailing boat with a lot of great outdoor living space, the interior of this boat is remarkable. All of the glass in both the sides of the hull as well as the sides of the cabin top, in addition to overhead hatches, produces so much light in this boat. So you notice we have two mirrored settees on either side of the boat with a drop leaf table. You can raise or lower either of the leaves independently and give plenty of room to walk through the salon. One of the perks of this design is the remarkable amount of storage for such a small boat. There's a hot water heater built in, plenty of storage underneath the settees on both sides and behind. In addition to all the other spaces on this boat, she even has her own built-in nav station and an office with a space that you can work right with your laptop right here. Aft to starboard is a full walk-in head with a shower and a toilet. It's got its own holding tank and plenty of storage. The engine is located directly beneath the steps. When you raise the steps with the gas struts, it's very easy to have full access to all your service points, including the dipstick, sea strainer, and your raw water pump. Outboard on the port side is an L-shaped galley with a top-loading refrigerator, stainless steel sink, trash receptacle, two-burner stove with an oven on a gimbal. Aft to port is the master stateroom, which is absolutely huge with a big double berth, lots of storage, and good ventilation. All the way forward is the second cabin through double doors, and behind them you have a hanging locker and shelving. On behalf of Dennis and Yachting, myself and Jeff Urban, thank you for joining us on today's preview of the Oceanus 30.1. I'd like to invite you to come and personally see this boat for yourselves, look at all the features, and decide if it's the right boat for you. If it is, I'd like you to know that you could own this boat in two to four weeks and be sailing in the Florida Keys or the Bahamas.